Hi guys, Dr. Huntington here with a video for you on the connection between the health of your gut and insulin resistance. Now right now you might be thinking, ah, that's got nothing to do with me, but it probably does. Because if we take all the people that are insulin resistant to a greater or lesser degree, and all the people who have an issue with gut health, to some degree, we are probably talking about everyone, or just about everyone. So this probably pertains to you, and it certainly pertains to someone you care about. Okay, so the gut, the term gut means, you know, both the large and small intestine. And we're going to focus on two aspects of gut health. The microbiome, which is the word that refers to the colony of microorganisms that live in your gut. And secondly, the integrity of your gut barrier. In other words, one of the jobs of your gut is to act as a selectively permeable membrane or barrier. So only certain things are supposed to pass through. But an unhealthy gut can become permeable, or the term you might hear now is leaky, right? Like leaky gut. And what happens is it allows things through that are not supposed to get inside your body. Now, insulin is a hormone produced in your pancreas. And one of its main jobs is to move glucose out of your blood and into your cells so that the sugar can be used for energy production. Now insulin also plays a role in fat storage because any sugar that you don't need for energy is pushed by insulin into fat storage. So insulin resistance refers to a situation where your cells no longer respond to insulin as they should. But the sugar in your blood can't stay there. In an insulin resistant state, you've got the cell not responding to insulin and so you've got blood sitting, you've got sugar that can be sitting there in your blood. And so when you have insulin resistance, what happens is due to that sugar still sitting in the blood, your pancreas then pumps out more insulin in an attempt to get your cells to respond. They're like, your, your pancreas is saying, hey, come on, listen, listen to the insulin. I'm going to pump out more. Come on, cells. Now, this works initially, but only for a little while. And then your cells, due to the increase in the exposure to insulin, actually become even more resistant. So what happens is your pancreas, now due to seeing that the insulin isn't being responded to, pumps out even more. And this is the cycle that leads to type 2 diabetes. So here's the relationship between the microorganisms in your gut and insulin resistance. Diet directly influences the type and balance of bacteria in your gut. And you probably know the typical American diet is loaded with sugar, unhealthy fats such as trans fats and chemicals from processed foods. And don't just assume that the foods marked as being natural are necessarily good for you because even though they're labeled natural, they're often loaded with sugar and chemicals. So you have to read the label. And then you have the problem of foods that are genetically modified and modern farming methods that often leave soil you know, depleted, resulting in food that lacks nutrients compared to 100 years ago. So all of these situations contribute one way or another to weight gain, and in turn, this excess body fat contributes to insulin resistance. But there's another problem, and that a bad diet also promotes an overgrowth of the harmful bacteria. It can also damage the lining of your gut, causing it to allow undigested food particles and bacteria and other microorganisms and toxins that aren't supposed to leave your gut to actually leave your gut and leak into your bloodstream. And that's the condition that's often referred to as leaky gut. And it triggers inflammatory reactions inside your body. And here's the connection between your gut and insulin resistance. You see, the inflammation caused by a leaky gut triggers these chemical reactions in your body that support and increase insulin resistance. So inflammation ultimately changes the way your cells are reacting to insulin. Now given all this, it's not surprising that studies have shown that there is more bacteria in the bloodstream of people with diabetes compared to non-diabetics. Another connection, uh, connection between gut health and insulin resistance can be found in a fluid that aids in digestion, bile. Bile is that yellowish brown fluid produced in the liver 
and it's best known for its role in breaking down fats and fat-soluble vitamins in the small intestine. But it also regulates a lot of other processes in the body, including the metabolism of glucose and sugar. But a lesser known function of bile is to help prevent the colonization of harmful bacteria. And this protects your body from the inflammation that an infection would otherwise cause. And because bile is helping to prevent an infection, and thus inflammation, it's helping to keep your body in balance, which helps prevent that inflammation from further contributing to insulin resistance. But also, your gut bacteria can alter the composition and production of bile by communicating with and sending signals to your liver. So you see, it's like a, it's like a loop. It's a, the, the, it's a cycle, a feedback loop. So there's a very close relationship between your gut health and how sensitive your cells are to insulin. Now, when we're talking about microorganisms in your gut, uh, we're not talking about just a few. We're literally talking about over a thousand different kinds. And they're in different proportions depending on your health. And an example of this would, would be the significant difference found between the gut microbiome of an obese person versus the microbiome of somebody who's lean. You see, an obese person tends, tends to have more microorganisms that cause intestinal per permeability. And that's a problem because it activates an inflammatory response, which neg negatively affects the cell's response to insulin, and thus more insulin, and thus more weight gain. Now, the good news is that you can improve your gut microbiome with lifestyle changes, you know, which include proper diet and supplementation. Studies done on mice actually show a change in diet can alter the gut microbiome within 24 hours. And I've seen patients who make huge strides in their health simply by making some lifestyle changes focused on improving gut health. So let's wrap up the key points here. An unhealthy gut plays a role in obesity and diabetes. Your diet, your lifestyle, and environment directly affect the health of your gut. Your gut health influences how hormones function and also how well you digest your food. If you, leave a life, if you live a lifestyle that causes an overgrowth of bad bacteria in your gut, it'll create inflammation. And that inflammation will negatively affect how your cells use insulin, leading to insulin resistance. And insulin resistance can lead to weight gain in obesity-related diseases. So make sure you're living a lifestyle that promotes a healthy gut. Eat a diet rich in vegetables, healthy fats, and moderate amounts of protein. Completely ditch the refined carbs. You don't need them. And make sure that you're taking dietary supplements that support the health of your gut. If you want to learn more, check out some of my other videos or visit bodymanual.com. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.